So this week, I wanted to talk to you guys about stealing as an artist. So most people think that stealing is always bad because we are very much used to the idea of copyright and how copying something from somebody else is wrong and all those things. The thing is, as an artist, uh, humans have been working collaboratively and taking ideas from each other for a very, very long time since we uh, really started creating. No one can really create in a vacuum. If there is no input, right, you cannot create something new. We are in a society right now where uniqueness is given the topmost value. And so people try so hard to be unique. And because of this, we are living in a very fragmented moment for art in general. Very few visual artists are actually collaborating and taking ideas from other people and saying proudly, this is our movement, this is what we're doing. If you look back at the times of Leonardo da Vinci, people think, wow, Leonardo da Vinci was a genius. He never worked by himself. He had a studio filled with different artists. And the way that they saw art back then was it was okay for him to come and paint on somebody else's painting and then somebody could come and paint on his painting and people collaborated all the time and it's very difficult for us to even imagine that right now because it is everybody's so so individualistic a lot of people give up because they can't find their own voice right away that's a shame right because your own voice will come your own voice will come if you listen if you don't stop it's a practice and that's what people are missing sometimes if you look at the music industry right now, you see a lot more collaboration. They figured out that working together and taking ideas from each other is the best way to come up with something new because you are always going to be your own unique individual. Even if you have a brother and a sister that lived through very similar things that you did, you're still a unique individual. So you have, you. it's like, it's like you're a filter, you're a giant coffee filter, right? But you make, whatever passes through you, go through your thoughts and your experiences. And so it is a guarantee that whatever you do, if you use your filter, is going to be something unique, right? So what is the issue with copying and art? How can you avoid being a copy of somebody else? Well, the way you do that is instead of you copying from one person, you find one person that you like, whatever they do, and you copy their style, you don't want to be the next so-and-so. You don't want to be the next Picasso. You don't want to be the next Leonardo. You want to be you, right? So the only way for you to be you is to be that beautiful filter, is to let everything pass through. So instead of looking at one person that you like, start looking at more people that you like. Look at a hundred people that you like. And that mixture, the mixture of all of those influences, that's what we call it, right? You're being influenced by these people and you're letting it wash over you. And that mixture of all of that, plus what you got to give, that will make you unique, right? So a lot of people start thinking that they have to come up with a, with a style first. I don't have a style. I'm not creative enough because I haven't found my style. Well, your style will come, right? Your style will come if you look at enough people, if you let yourself be influenced. So what is creativity? How can you be unique? In the world of art, nothing is unique unique okay nothing is a brand new idea everything came from something else and that is one of the biggest misconceptions about art that people have is that you have to create something that has never been seen before that is impossible my friends impossible what you have to give is your own unique filter so you are able to look at all of these influences and transform into something that, yes, has never been seen before, but takes um, ideas and is influenced by other people's artwork and other people's viewpoint and other people's um, uh, inspirations too. So you, it's, it becomes a beautiful snowball of ideas that comes to the present day. So as an artist, it's really nice and powerful if you're able to say, um, what is your artist's lineage, right? Oh yeah, I was influenced by so-and-so and blah, 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 and this person and that person. If you can quote like four or five really important influences and people will look at your artwork and they'll say, 
yes, I see that. It's almost like you're saying your lineage, right? Oh, um, uh, my parents, my grandparents, they came from here and then whatever. If you can say your lineage as a human being, you can say your lineage as an artist. Your ideas have a lineage too, right? And that's powerful. There's a book that I really like, and it's called Steal Like an Artist by Austin Cleon. And in that book, he mentions how an artist is not a hoarder. An artist is a collector. Now, what does a hoarder do? A hoarder gathers things and keeps them without discrimination, right? So they're keeping anything and everything. An artist, when they're trying to create something new, they are going to be more of a collector. So you look at something and you say, yes, I, I, I like this, this is new, this is different, I'm gonna keep it. Oh no, that one, I, I, I already have something similar or it's not pretty enough or it's not good enough, I don't want that one. So you have to, to know how to select your influences too, right? You cannot be influenced by everything you see. So you collect it, you look at it, you curate it, curate it, right? And then you use those um, when you're creating something new. So if you can take one thing out of this video, is that creativity does not happen in a vacuum, okay? Creativity happens by observing and watching and taking and processing and creating, all right? So that's it, you guys. I wanna see what happens next week. I wanna see this artwork that's gonna come. It's gonna be fabulous. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.